If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn on your notifications so that way you won't miss any of our widely varied video programs, including those with me and my friend Jay Leno. Also, follow us on Instagram at Audrain Auto Museum and Audrain Motorsport. So, day two of the 2021 Millimilia begins for us, and uh, I think most appropriately here in Viraggio, um, it's, it's at a carnival museum. And yeah. That was pretty wild. Yeah, it was definitely getting up very early. I mean, that night I probably got three hours of sleep because I was backing up footage. And to go to this, uh, you know, very cheerful, a lot of colors and, and all the cars lined up and everyone's so happy and that's like, whoa, it's like kind of early in the morning for this. But I mean, that you do really get awoken by all the cars and, and the people and you feed off that energy. And I was very excited because we were traveling to Rome that day, so it's halfway. So. Exactly, and uh, of course the great thing is with the uh, Mille Mille Storica as opposed to the Mille Mille di Velocità, when the old adage, he who leads at Rome will never win the race, <laughs> it didn't matter because we weren't going to win anyway, so we could just get to Rome uh, on our own. And enjoy ourselves. But the most important part about the start of this day, Donald, is I had a nice breakfast. Ah, uh, you have to have a nice breakfast because, of course, we started out at 7.08 in the morning. Uh, we had arrived in uh, Viareggio, as you heard in the last uh, segment, at about 9.30 at night. So it was not bad at all. You know, <laughs> had dinner, um, uh, had uh, the guys from Classic Car Charter check out the car, drove to the hotel, got a great garage space. Oh, yeah, with a casual uh, W194. Exactly. No, no big deal, No right? big deal there at all. Um, so that was pretty neat. That, that was actually one of those true Mille Miglia moments. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not every day when you get to uh, share garage space that no. way. And uh, also it was one of those uh, great things where, um, not to dislocate my shoulder by patting myself on the back, but my Don't previous, my, no, I hate that. My previous Mille Miglia experience also told me, as soon as we got to the hotel, I went in right away and went to the desk and says, and said, where's the garage? <laughs> yeah. Because yep, we got the last that. spot in the covered garage. Yeah. I mean, the, it wouldn't have been so, so bad if our car was parked on the street because it was covered, but you wouldn't want to leave a car like that parked on the road just for anyone to, to access it at, uh, at night. But it was no. nice that we had a, a nice covered and safe garage for it. No, that was, uh, that was amazing. And so a reasonable night's sleep before yes. we got up to go to the uh, to the to the uh, start and of course our faithful support crew from classic car charter uh, had us all ready to go and uh, then we made our start now of course this was the real test of the millimillion this is our first big day yeah yeah and uh, you know 542 543 kilometers to cover for the day and you know average speeds of 24 miles per hour, 25 <laughs> miles per hour, not a big deal, right? <laughs> Seems like a walk in the park, at the, at the start at least. <laughs> exactly, and uh, of course, one of the things that um, is also great about going to Rome in the Millimilia is the fact that, you know, you don't stay in the greatest hotels on the Millimilia, as, as we've discussed before, but one of the other things to look forward to is not only Rome, but one of the few four-star hotels that all yes. the crews stay in. The wonderful yes. uh, Parco de' Medici Hotel yes. in Rome is, is a pretty neat place. So. Oh yeah, I mean that was definitely a, a treat after you know, 16 or so hours and then you finally get to, to rest. I mean that was a, a really nice hotel for sure. So we're back on the road and of course uh, it was an easy day. The uh, route uh, diversions were kept to a minimum. Yep. So we could really sort of concentrate on the driving and on the experience. Uh, some really terrific roads going down to uh, going down to Rome, going down the uh, the uh, west coast of Italy. Yes. And uh, one of the things that also uh, comes up is the fact that you know we're driving this car from 1940, and we've already mentioned the fact that the tachometer doesn't actually indicate the actual revs the engine is turning, so you're doing it by ear. And the 
fuel gauge is also something which is uh, slightly inoperable. So um, you and I discussed, and, and we won't get too specific into this, but we like to stop on the road for rest breaks every now and then. So we thought, well, it's fine. When we stop for our rest breaks, we're not going to uh, run out of fuel. But of course, it always pays to track the mileage so that we know that you know we go approximately 200 kilometers on, on a tank of, of fuel. And so um, it was very important for you as a navigator to carefully mark off yes. the number of miles yes. we've covered. And uh, that got a bit hairy. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was definitely a point where I thought I was going to have to say, I told you so, Donald, because <laughs> we were approaching a, a roundabout, one of, you know, maybe two or three in Italy. And, <laughs> uh, and there was a gas station, and I said, Donald, I think we should get gas. And you're like, oh, no, there's I'm people behind us. I'm going to stop on the other side of the road, because getting across the road, that's just too much of a hassle. No, and, and, there'll be another one. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, you know, we start, we start heading up into the mountains, and it's 25 kilometers goes by, 50 kilometers goes by, you know, 175 kilometers goes by. And then we get into this one town, and, of course, the cars in front of us are stopping because we're... Every, all the people are, are cheering us on, and, and there's the checkpoint, and we're on an incline that's very steep. I mean, it must have been like, I don't know, 40 degree angle. It Easily. Was, it was extremely steep on a very, very narrow road, and the car starts going chug, 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 chug. And I'm thinking to myself, if I have to push this car up this hill, I'm not going to be too happy with you. But but we got to the top of the hill, and, and uh, I guess the, the gas in the tank settled itself out and the car started behaving normally again and then we go through the checkpoint and then we head down the mountain i think we coasted that a little bit and then at the end it was this golden gas station there it was yeah. like 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 the wonderful uh mirage of the oasis in the desert yes it yes was, uh, now of course the our car was light though you know 500 yes. kilos you could have pushed it for yeah, I could probably 10 or 15 kilometers could have lifted it with all the extra lunch that i had that day so uh exactly and of course, you know, the experience of driving uh, an old car is always a wonderful thing for me. And it was a great thrill and a new experience for you. Yes, yes. We, we I think it was, yeah, it was in the afternoon, probably two or three o'clock. And uh, after lunch, because I knew that you had to have your energy. Exactly, you know, I, I need that. And um, uh, we were in, in one, I don't remember what pass we were on, but we were in the mountains and you pulled over to the side of the road and then I was easily distracted by the group of uh, newer Mercedes that went by, uh, an AMG GTR and a couple of the other ones. You're like, oh, come on, let's go, hurry up. <laughs> and uh, you're like, you're driving. I said, oh, okay. So I get in the car and I, I familiarize myself with the shift pattern and it's very much not like a, a modern <laughs> gearbox. It's kind of, you know, kind of feeling maybe you're in third gear. But um, and synchronization is a theory. Yes. In yes. Second, third, and fourth. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I get into first and I get rolling, and um, I was surprised. I thought that the car handled uh, really well. One of the things I was not used to, well, two things, was how much steering input you need as someone who daily drives a Mini Cooper, where I can just kind of turn it a little bit and I'm already in the turn. You this, you really gotta move the steering. There's wheel. a reason. For yeah. the diameter of that steering wheel. <laughs> yes, and I mean, I think there was a couple curves where <laughs> I had the car a little, a little sideways. But I mean, I, I feel like I got used to it. But one of the things that really shocked me was, I mean, this car has 46 horsepower. So I'm thinking to myself, this isn't going to be scary. I mean, I, I ride a, a super bike, and and to get going on some of those mountain passes with only 40. Uh, 45 or 46 horsepower and then to feel the lack of brakes I should say is very scary and I, I to this to this day I would say it's the scariest car that I've ever driven because I was really not used to how much concentration was really needed to get the car going and as a momentum car yes I remember you were telling me it's it's very important that you you know accelerate here or slow down here because it's going to be very difficult for us to get going again because of the lack of power. And it was a, a style of, of driving that I had never done before. Um, I think the oldest car that I've ever driven besides that was a 
2002 Turbo. <laughs> so BMW, so yeah, older, older by a magnitude. Yeah, yeah. So from 74 to 1940, 1940. I mean, there's a big difference in jump in technology. But but you know, you have to say because you did have a smile on your face after a while because. Yeah. Well, I was, I was a little horror struck in for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but the liveliness of the car, I think you yes. really began to feel that. Yes. The fact that, as opposed to a lot of modern high performance cars, you feel in the seat of your pants what the car is doing at every minute. And that's the reason why some, a couple of the slides may have been unintentional, but after a while you began to feel what the slides yeah. could do in terms yeah. of driving the car. Yeah, I mean, it felt, it felt really good to steer the, the car with the rear end through some of those tighter turns and to, to also, I mean, the, the aerodynamics of the car. I mean, I, I felt it when you were driving where we would come on some of these downhill passes and we would be catching up to cars much faster than us. But when I actually drove the car, I could feel how aerodynamic it was. And that was very, very impressive for, I mean, a hand-built car from exactly. the 40s to be that good. You lift your foot from the accelerator and the car just keeps going. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's no slowing down, very little engine braking. Yes, yes. And uh, the shape is just astonishing. Yes, and it was it was a lot of fun to to practice the, the double clutch mm -hmm. um, downshifting and, and upshifting with, with the, that iffy synchronized gearbox. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was for it was very very stressful, and I think my uh, respect level of you driving for the majority of it to to be concentrated for that long. I mean, it's not. It really I can't stress enough. It's not a modern car. I mean, there were these guys who are driving the um, the. It's not the official Millimilia, but it's like the new Millimilia. Right. Yes. With the uh, the, the friends of the Millimilia yeah, with these uh, yeah big Audis and things super like that. Supercars. Yeah. I mean, we were behind that guy with the Huracan at one point and you were saying, all right, all right, slow down <laughs> because I was, I wanted to keep up with him. But yeah, I mean, I, I personally would not want to do it with a car like that because I mean, seeing that Huracan, which is literally the width of the road, I mean, that guy must have been way more stressed than we were with this little car. That was really funny. Yes, I remember you remarking on that, the fact that, you know, we're on these winding mountain roads and especially with a lot of, of very uh, sharp right hand uphill turns yeah. where we at least could stay on our side yes, of the road. Yes, that hurricane was, yeah. was on the other side of the road simply because of the width of the car. Yeah, you know, it was, yeah uh, that, was, that was scary for sure. <laughs> I mean, one sneeze and you're gonna crash it into the side of the mountain. <laughs> yeah, no, not for me. I prefer my 1940 Seata. Thank you very, very much. Um, and then of course, the most exciting part of, of any Millimilia is the entry to Rome. Oh, I thought you were going to say dinner. <laughs> well, because dinner's on the way. Yeah, that's of true. Course. That's what so, I was thinking. So, um, you know, we, we uh, started out at 7 in the morning at Viareggio, and we were entering Rome just around 9.45. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and headed to the checkpoint at the uh, top of the Via Veneto. And yeah. we gathered all the cars together. There were people behind the barricades in, in, in grandstands, and it was just absolutely amazing. And then a tour of Rome on the yeah, way back to the uh, hotel. Very casual. Very casual, exactly. I mean, that was such a spectacular moment to, to arrive there. And I mean, there were, I mean, I say it, there are thousands of people. I mean, this was, the entire grandstands on both sides were full with so many people cheering on us and the cars and that lineup at the end I remember I got out and I took some pictures and video and just to have all of these different cars together all lined up I mean we all had done the same thing that day it was so cool to share in, in the passion and I think there was a what's the Fiat Jeep or whatever that, oh Amata yes yes yeah. someone who the did Alfa Romeo Amata yes yes sorry the Alfa yes. Amata I mean that was so cool to see <laughs> our car, and then there was a 300 SL, and then there was the t the Amata, and the, the, that person to be doing it. And that was I thought that was really funny, and that was kind of the the beauty of it that there's all these different cars and different people, and we're all together sharing in the in the same passion. And that was that was fun to to enjoy. And and the thing about this day too, uh, mentioned the fact that you know we finished 16 hours after we started, and it really brought home the epic nature of yeah. the Millimilia. Yeah. It's not just a casual drive through the Italian countryside. No. It is, no. It is a commitment. And I think, I think that, the, uh, that day especially um, 
coming down the west coast and seeing all of the small beach towns and then kind of getting further into Tuscany and then seeing all of these kind of like vineyard type landscapes and then the towns through the mountains and then finally getting into Rome. I mean, we covered a lot of different terrain and, and also uh, uh, different roads and different styles of driving, which was fun. That also brings up actually a very interesting point. The reason why the Mille Miglia was started and one of the reasons why the Italian government really promoted it was because back in the 1920s and 30s they wanted to promote tourism in Italy. Yes. People had come to Italy and gone to Rome and gone to Florence and that was about it. Occasionally they might have gone down to Sicily. But people did not know most of the country. Yes. And so they thought by doing this race across half of Italy they'll get to introduce regions um, that people had never seen. Yeah. And uh, we got to see those regions, albeit at a bit of a rush, yes. um, but there are lots of places I've been on the Mille Miglia over the years, and I'm sure this is the case with you uh, this year as well, that you want to go back to. Yes. You kept mentioning these great roads, you kept saying, I've got to come back here on my motorcycle and ride <laughs> these roads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I would, I would have loved to have done the Mille Miglia on, uh, on my Panigale. I mean, I think that, I think it was on the first day where that guy passed us, and I was like, Donald, look, it's a Panigale. But yeah, I mean, uh, you really, it's like, yeah, there are good driving roads in America. I mean, I'm sure you've experienced all of them in California, but I mean, to do all of those roads in Italy with perfect weather and, I mean, I'm not gonna say, of course there is a speed limit, but in some of those mountain regions, I mean, I don't think the police are really policing them too hard, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I would, I would have too much fun if I, if I did that. Well, it's an interesting thing too, to go back to the average speed. Yes. Uh, now, again, we were not placed very high in the rankings because yeah. of our, our, our expert uh, point gathering. But nonetheless, to maintain the average speeds, yes. which seem very low over the distance, you actually have to get the car moving yes, pretty do. well in a lot of spots. Well, I mean, you, you see like 25 miles an hour. It's when you get stuck behind a, a school bus here at 25 miles an hour, it's awful. But I mean, on those, sharp, twisty roads with a lot of elevation changes. I mean, it is very difficult to maintain that speed. And one of the days, I don't remember which one, we had a very, very, we had a, like what, 30 or 40 at one point, I think? Yes. Which was, we, we, we which were was both very happy with that. I mean, we were absolutely really extraordinary. Moving. Yeah, actually it was on this day, the, um, the final stage on this day had an average speed of uh, 41 kilometers an yes, hour. Yes, yes. Which was like flying. Yes, yes. <laughs> And, and that, was, that was amazing at the end, where, where we're coming into Rome, and you can see all of the, the ancient Roman baths and, and the other stuff in, on, on, in the hills, and you really get that sense of, oh, we are getting into Rome now. And, I mean, that day was particularly hot. They all were, but I felt like that day was very, very warm. And it was nice to get into Rome at night because the temperatures had cooled down a little bit. The car probably appreciated cooler temperatures. Absolutely. Um, especially being in, stuck in that parade, which was, <laughs> I mean, we talk about motorcycles. The Italian policemen, I think, were having a blast where they would race up to one intersection, slam on the brakes and stop traveling and race past us. I mean, you could tell that they were, they were glad that they were chosen for that, that appointment. It, I have to say that it's worth the entry of the Mille Miglia. It's worth driving 15 and a half, 15 hours in the car just to be able to drive through Rome with a police escort yeah. because you can't do that no, otherwise. No, it would have taken us hours to do what we had done in what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Absolutely, it that was, was extraordinary. To, I had never seen the Colosseum so free before and to see it with no cars and f was just amazing. Yeah, again, one of those sort of period throwbacks. You see pictures of cars um, of this period yeah. in cities like yeah. Rome and there's very little traffic on the road yeah. because most people are still on their bicycles. And uh, so we had a genuine 1940 experience in yes, the center of Rome in 2021. It was, I mean, and that's a one of one car, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, to do that in a one of one car, like you said, from 1940 was, I mean, who, we were so lucky to experience something like that. I mean, it was amazing. And the great thing was, we had completed a very long day. We got <laughs> to the hotel at just about uh, 10 minutes to 11, and we could rest and relax <laughs> and take it easy and be back in the car to start at 
10 minutes to 7 the next morning. <laughs> yeah, another 17-hour day. Off to Bologna. But that's another story. Yeah.